Hello everyone, in this video we're talking about the key attributes of the absolute value graph. Well, first of all, what is absolute value? You may remember that absolute value is indicated by these two bars. And all absolute value is, is a distance from zero. If we think about it in terms of a number line, like let's look at negative three and three, and we're going to take the absolute value of each of those. How far away are each of them from zero? Each of these numbers, uh, both negative and positive three, are three units away from zero. So the absolute value of each of these numbers is positive 3. And because absolute value is a distance, distances are positive. That's why this absolute value of negative 3 became positive 3. Uh, just thinking about distances being positive, you wouldn't say that you drive negative uh, 4 miles to a friend's house. All right, before we move on, you try. Find the absolute value of these of 5, negative 7, and a 5 minus 7. All right, the absolute value of 5 is just 5. It's 5 units away from 0. Negative 7, negative 7 is 7 units away from 0. And then finally, 5 minus 7, we evaluate inside the, print, inside the absolute value first. So this is the absolute value of negative 2, which is equal to 2. So just notice, anything that we have negative inside these absolute value bars ends up becoming positive. So let's see how we can apply that by looking at a graph. Let's start by graphing the equation y equals x minus 2. Right, so this graph has a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of 1. So I can plot out some points and then connect them. All right, now let's consider the graph of the absolute value of x minus 2. What's going to happen to these negative y values? All of those negative outputs are now positive because we took the absolute value of all of this. So the graph is going to, once it starts going negative, it's going to bounce the other way. One negative one becomes one positive one. This negative two becomes a positive two. And now this becomes my absolute value graph here in red. All right, so here's an example of absolute value graph. Absolute value looks like a V. That's nice and easy to remember uh, because value has the V. We're going to be looking at absolute value graphs in the form of A times the absolute value of X minus H plus K. Okay, um, these are the transformations on the graph. And that it's exactly like the general functions that we just got done studying. All right, so for all absolute value graphs, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Now, as far as the range goes, if the graph is facing up in a positive V, the range will be from K to infinity. But if it's facing down, the range will be negative infinity to K. The vertex, which is this point right here, the vertex is always at the point HK. And the axis of symmetry which is this invisible line that goes right through the middle where it's symmetric about this axis. Um, this is always at x equals h. <clears throat> and one quick little fix, these k's should have brackets because the k is included in these absolute value graphs. And so let's actually try to do that for the graph that we were just looking at. Its domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity because it goes forever left and right. We can see from the graph that the range is from 2 to infinity. All right, uh, the vertex, which is right here, this is at the point 3, 2. So the vertex is 3, 2. And the axis of symmetry is just always going to be x equals the same x of the vertex. So it's at x equals 3. And it's very important that you say x equals 3 because that's the equation of the vertical line. This line is x equals 3. Now the vertex is the max or min of an absolute value graph. If a graph opens upward, this vertex is a minimum. Or if the graph opens down, this vertex is a max. Let's think about this graph. Will this have a maximum or a minimum? And then let's think about where. From transformations, we know that a negative on the outside here, this is a reflection over the x-axis. So we know that this graph is facing down. And now we just got to say, where is that vertex? 
So remember that the vertex is at hk and the definition says x minus h. So you're always going to take the opposite of h. And that's just like um, transformations whenever the inside moved right and left. Right, This is going to go left 3 and down 4. So this vertex point is going to be at negative 3, negative 4. So we could say that this has a max at negative 3, negative 4. Let's think about how do we find the y-intercept. At a y-intercept, that's where it hits the, the y-axis, x equals 0. So we're going to set x equal to 0. That leaves me with y equals 3 times the absolute value of 0 minus 2 plus 4. So that's 3 times the absolute value of negative 2 plus 4. Well, what's the absolute value of negative 2? It's positive 2. So now we have 3 times 2 plus 4. Notice that these turn to parentheses once I took the absolute value, and I'm just indicating that I need to multiply. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4 equals 10. So this has a y-intercept at 0, 10. Go ahead and try to see if you can remember from a couple slides back, where will this vertex be? Will it be a max or a min? The vertex was at negative 2, negative 5, and it was a minimum because this graph opened upward because this number is positive. All right, now try this one again. Find the y-intercept. All right, after going through all these steps, and you can pause the video if you need to, the y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. Remembering that we replace x with 0 and solve. Anything inside this absolute value bar will become positive. All right, goodbye.